There were no environmental laws when I became Secretary of Interior. The rivers of this country essentially were sewers. There was a smog episode in New York City that killed a large number of people. Air pollution that killed people. We made during the 1960s, the first list of endangered species. And what was at the top of the list? The American bald eagle, our national symbol. Like lots of others in my generation, I thought that all the beauty was gonna be destroyed. I thought that cheesy suburbs would overrun the fields and the hills. It was a sense that we were finalizing our alienation from nature and, and poisoning the planet. Growing up, progress was defined by growth and gross national product. That you could see the gross national product grow ever higher at the same time that there was this growing recognition that life was, in some very important ways, getting worse as we progressed. Our air and water were polluted. Our most beautiful natural places were being destroyed. Cities are becoming increasingly unlivable. Food was becoming increasingly processed to the point where it was neither nutritious nor enjoyable, and on and on. All of which contributed to this sense of progress. But at the same time, people had a mounting discontent that in some sense was one of the great underlying uh, engines of launching the environmental movement. The environmental movement that grew out of Rachel Carson's book was built on the foundation of the conservation movement. There were big issues like preserving the Everglades and not putting an airport there. And the National Wildlife Federation was right in the forefront of this. There was a big proposal for dams in the Grand Canyon. Can you imagine damming the Grand Canyon? This was raised into a big national issue, particularly by the Sierra Club. And I was persuaded uh, as Secretary of Interior that the project should be abandoned. The environmental movement enlarged the conservation movement. It enlarged it beyond concern for the management of United States resources to the future of the planet itself. What really 
really alarmed me about the state of the planet's ecology was a book by Paul Ehrlich on overpopulation. It just made perfect sense to me that, that human overpopulation was driving the degradation of the quality of life. When I was born, there were two billion people on the planet. When I wrote The Population Bomb in 1968, there were three and a half billion people on the planet. That number has now almost doubled. We're over 6.5 billion. And people say, well, population growth is slowing down. We're only going to add, if we're lucky, another two and a half billion people. Well, two and a half billion people is more than there were on the entire planet when I was born. The population situation is bad beyond what any demographer uh, even dreamed of 25 years ago. What about the resource situation in the world? Well, the most important resource to all of us, of course, is food. When Paul Ehrlich's book, The Population Bomb, came out in the late 60s, he was instantly famous. He was instantly controversial. Sometime in the next 15 years, the end will come. And by the end, I mean an utter breakdown of the capacity of the planet to support humanity. I'd been a student of, of Paul Ehrlich's at Stanford. I trusted him and liked him. I bought it completely. It was a global perspective, which was interesting, because many of the things that environmentalists were doing up to then were not so global. You can be absolutely sure that we've had it. Everybody who's looked into the overall population resource environment picture comes up with the same kind of estimate of what would be required if we're to have a 50-50 chance of getting through the next couple of decades with civilization intact. He grabbed the thorniest thistle of all, which is us, you know, human reproduction. I was totally galvanized. And I went to my dorm room and just sort of blasted out a draft of this speech to deliver at commencement titled, The Future is a Cruel Hoax. It was pretty drastic uh, rhetoric. I said, you know, mankind's moved across the face of the earth like a great unthinking, unfeeling cancer. And that the most humane thing for me to do would be to have no children at all. I was a media figure overnight. It was personal. I said, I'm not gonna have a child. This is very serious. Um, and, and I was a woman saying it. All right. I, I went around and gave 80 speeches in a year. If every student says, I'm not gonna have more than two children, then within five years, the population growth curve will begin to drop. So the future is in our hands in a very, very real sense this way. The pill had just recently become available. So this is something I can do as an act of conscience.